Hello, hello, hello. It is your mom of three. N N Y C. I am back with another video. Yay! <laughs> Bible scholars, it's good to see you. If this is your first time on my channel, welcome. My name is Tanae's. I'm the mother of three reading. My, all three of my kids love to read. Uh, three reading kids living in the heart of New York City. I would love for you to join my YouTube family, my tribe, and all you have to do is subscribe. And to become a Bible scholar, my special VIP group of tribe members, follow along. We are reading through the Bible. It's a great place to jump on. We finished First Kings last week, and this video is a review of Second Kings chapters 1 and 2. Second Kings. We have read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings. We are now in 2 Kings. I will be reading from the NIV translation. Put every verse that I read out loud on the screen for you. 2 Kings chapter 1. It's Ahaziah. Now king of Israel, he fell through the lattice. I'll include a picture of what a lattice is here. Of his upper room. As he has sent messengers, he sent messengers to consult ba Baal Zebub, a false god, to see if he is going to recover from his injury. I wanted to read verses three and four. The angel of the Lord said to Elijah the Tishbite, Go up and meet the messengers of the king of Samaria. Ask them, is it because there is no God in Israel that you are going off to consult Baalzebub, the God of Ekron? Therefore, this is what the Lord says. You will not leave the bed you were lying on. You will certainly die. So Elijah went. The messengers returned to Ahaziah. They tell him everything Elijah had said and that he will die. When Ahaziah asks them to describe the man that met them, they describe Elijah. Ahaziah sent a captain with his company of 50 men. Go to Elijah, sitting on top of a hill, and they demand that the king says, come down. Verse 10. Elijah answered the captain, If I am a man of God, may fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50 men. Then fire fell from heaven and consumed the captain and his men. Ahaziah sent to Elijah another captain with 50 men. This captain told Elijah to come down down at once. Elijah said the same thing as before. If I am a man of God, may fire come down from heaven, consume you and your 50 men. This is 13, 14, and 15. And so before we actually move on, I didn't understand like why is this fire coming down? And so there are a few different concordances that I reference. BlueLetterBible.org, according to that source, they said that the fire represented the wrath of God against the ungodliness and unrighteousness of these men demanding that Elijah come down to the king, Ahaziah. Down below in the comments, do you guys have any other thoughts on that? Why, why was Elijah even asking for the fire? All right, verses 13, 14, and 15. Uh, so the king sent a third captain with his 50 men. The third captain went up and fell on his knees before Elijah. Man of God, he begged, please have respect for my life and the lives of these 50 men, your servants. See, fire has fallen from heaven and consumed the first two captains and all their men. But now have respect for my life. 
The angel of the Lord said to Elijah, go down with him. Do not be afraid of him. Elijah got up, went down with him to the king. Elijah told Ahaziah that it is because there is no God in Israel. You send messengers to consult Baalzebub? Because you have done this, you will never leave your bed. You will die. Ahaziah died. Chapter 2. Elijah and Elisha were traveling together. Elijah told Elisha to stay in Gilgal as the Lord was sending him to Bethel. Verse 2 and verse 3 of chapter 2. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here. The Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, but do not speak of it. The Lord then sent Elijah to Jericho. Elisha will not leave Elijah. He accompanies him to Jericho. Prophets in Jericho tell Elisha the same thing. He gives the same response. The Lord sent Elijah to Jordan, tells Elisha to remain. Same reply. He's not going to leave him. Verses 7 and 8 of chapter 2. Fifty men of the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. What a miracle. After they crossed, Elijah asked Elisha, what can I do for you before I die? Elisha asked him, let me inherit a double portion of your spirit. I'm going to read for you guys a lot of the following verses of chapter 2, just because they're so beautifully written, and me summarizing it will not do it justice. So I'm going to read for you verses 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said, yet if you see me when I am taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father, the chariots and horsemen of Israel. Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them apart. He picked up the cloak that had fallen from Elijah and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the cloak that had fallen from him and struck the water with it. Where now is the Lord, the God of Elijah, he asked. When he struck the water, it divided to the right and to the left. He crossed over. The prophets from Jericho saw all of it. So all of that declared the spirit of Elijah now rested on Elisha and bowed down to him. They also suggested that Elijah may have been picked up and set down elsewhere by the spirit of God. They asked Elisha if they could go and look for Elijah. No, Elisha said verses 17 and 18, but they persisted until he was too ashamed to refuse. So he said, send them. They sent 50 men, searched for three days, but did not find him. When they returned to Elisha, who was staying in Jericho, he said to them, didn't I tell you not to go? The men of the city told Elisha that their water's bad and the land is unproductive. Elisha told them to bring him a bowl, verses 21 and 22. 
Then he went out to the spring and threw the salt into it, saying, This is what the Lord says. I have healed this water. Never again will it cause death or make the land unproductive. And the water has remained wholesome to this day, according to the word Elisha has spoken. Elisha went to Bethel. As he was walking, youths came and jeered at him, teased him, calling him bald-headed. Chapter 2 ends with the two final verses, 24 and 25. He turned around, looked at them, called down a curse on them in the name of the Lord. And two bears came out of the woods, mauled 42 of the youths. Mm. He went on to Mount Carmel and from there returned to Samaria. All right, Bible scholars, off to a great start. That is the review for 2 Kings chapters 1 and 2. As always, questions, comments, or revelations, please leave them in the comments below. Welcome to all the new Bible scholars. You're in for, in for a treat. We're on a mission. We're on a mission. Have an amazing, amazing rest of your day, and I'll see you in our next review. Bye for now, Bible scholars.